I'm Gloria Ledoux bringing you the Compliance Outlook for a review of the third and fourth quarter of 2016 at the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight. It's really hard to believe that we're already in the fourth quarter. While 2016 comes to an end, let's make sure we have all of our compliance ducks in a row. For the third quarter of this year, FinCEN issued the member due diligence requirements for legal entities that became effective in July. If your credit union hasn't implemented new procedures yet, don't worry. Even though the effective date was in July, credit unions have until May 11th of 2018 to comply. Last quarter, we also had same-day ACH become effective. We'll talk briefly about this change. But as a reminder, we also have a separate Compliance Connection video devoted specifically to these changes, which goes into detail on the changes associated with the implementation of the rule. For the fourth quarter of this year, we have the Military Lending Act becoming effective on October 3rd. Even though we were hoping for some more clarification on certain aspects of the rule from the Department of Defense or the DOD, the compliance deadline is approaching fast. Credit unions should be prepared to have their process in place for complying with these significant changes. Fingers crossed that we will get some more clarification on issues soon. Lastly, coming up on December 1st is the effective date for the changes the Department of Labor made regarding the payment of overtime to certain employees. FinCEN finalized their rule related to member due diligence requirements for beneficial owners of legal entities. These new requirements became effective on July 11th of this year. However, credit unions do not have to comply until May 11th of 2018. After that date, any new accounts opened will need beneficial owner information. Credit unions will need to revise their policies and procedures to identify the beneficial owners of legal entities who come to the credit union to open up accounts and they will also need to verify those owners in accordance with their MIP CIP or their member identification program. Within FinCEN, FinCEN's revised rule, there is a model certification form that the credit union can use to obtain beneficial ownership information. Credit unions are encouraged to use that model form and not reinvent the wheel if they don't have to. Although FinCEN said that they will not provide a safe harbor, they did say that credit unions using this form satisfy the requirements outlined in the regulation. For your existing business accounts, the regulation indicates that credit unions should obtain this beneficial ownership information in their normal course monitoring. So in addition to building procedures to require the certification form for your new accounts, credit unions should also make sure to revise their existing process when conducting normal updates of their membership files to obtain beneficial ownership information for their existing accounts as well. Effective on September 23, 2016, all receiving depository financial institutions, or RDFIs, were required to receive same-day ACH payments. Funds have to be made available from those same-day ACH credits, such as payroll direct deposits, by the end of the credit union's processing day in this first phase of the rollout. These changes to NACHA rules are part of a three-phase process. The second phase becomes effective on September 15th of next year, with the final phase of March 16th, 2018 becoming effective. As we mentioned earlier, we do have a Compliance Connection video that explains these ACH changes from an expert. The Military Lending Act is effective on October 3rd of 2016. Credit unions now have to determine if a borrower is covered under this new rule. There are two safe harbor methods for doing this, including using a credit report from a credit reporting agency or using the Department of Defense's database. Credit unions are encouraged to take advantage of one of these safe harbor methods when determining coverage. Any other option for determining covered status is a risk. Once we have determined that our borrower is covered and they are applying for a covered loan, we need to make sure our credit union is providing them with the mandatory loan disclosures required under the rule and that we are properly calculating the military annual percentage rate and ensuring that it does not exceed 36%. And we also have to provide them with the protections they are entitled to under the Act. For the mandatory loan disclosures under the MLA, the regulation actually provides safe harbor language for the credit union to use. Credit unions are reminded that in addition to the loan disclosures, there is a new requirement to provide the disclosures orally. Many credit unions are choosing to provide a toll-free number to comply with this requirement. If the credit union is using a 1-800 number, 
the Department of Defense came out with some clarification that may be useful for the credit union if they wanted to use a pre-recorded message. The clarification was on the description of the payment obligation that is required to be provided under the rule. And the Department of Defense indicated that a credit union may orally provide a clear description of the payment obligation of the covered borrower by providing a general description of how the payment obligation is calculated or a description of what the borrower's payment obligation would be based on an estimate of the amount the borrower may borrow. For example, the credit union could generally describe how minimum payments are calculated on an open-end credit plan issued by the creditor and then refer the covered borrower to the written materials they received in connection with opening up the plan. Alternatively, a creditor, a credit union, could choose to generally describe borrower's obligation to make a monthly, bi-monthly, or weekly payment as the case may be under the borrower's arrangements. As a reminder, on this slide, we've listed the fees that the credit union is required to include in the MAPR calculation. In addition, we know that there are now some military annual percentage rate or MAPR calculators available through CUNA and CUNA Mutual that can assist credit unions in determining that numerical MAPR, which we know cannot exceed that 36%. Credit unions are prohibited from requiring covered borrowers to waive any of their legal rights, require arbitration, impose any onerous legal notice provisions, or demand any unreasonable notice for a borrower as a condition for legal action. Effective on December 1st, 2016, regulations will change impacting whether certain salaried employees are exempt from the Fair Labor Standard Act's minimum wage and overtime protections. Come December 1st, in addition to the standard duties test, in order for salaried employees to be considered exempt employees, they must have a salary of $913 per week or $47,476 for a full year. Remember, the standard duties test says that employees are exempt if they are employed in a bona fide executive, administrative, or professional capacity as defined in the Department of Labor's regulations. This exemption from the Fair Labor Standards is referred to as the White Collar or EAP exemption. No changes are being made to the standards duties test, so your classification of employees shouldn't need to be adjusted. The last update to this law actually occurred back in 2004, so the current standard before this revision was at $455 per week or $23,660 for a full year. So this new increase is a little over double that prior amount. So credit unions that have employees that are below the salary threshold have a few options in order to comply with the new law. Keep in mind that credit unions are permitted to include non-discretionary bonuses and incentive payments to satisfy up to 10% of that $47,476. However, these payments have to be paid at least quarterly. Thank you for joining me at the CU Compliance Connection and stay tuned for future broadcasts on issues that affect your credit union. We are here to help you at the CU Compliance Connection by InfoSight.